So I just wanted to address that. The first story we're going to talk about is actually something I heard about a long, long time ago. And like I said, I'm kind of a, I'm, I'm a big fan of zombie lore. And so this kind of came across my desk years and years ago. It's called the Cotard Delusion, also known as Walking Dead Syndrome, before the comic book. So what it is, it's a it's related to Capgras Syndrome, which we talked about before, where you, you think people have been replaced by clones. It's a brain disease. But this time it's totally inwards. So you start getting lesions on your brain. You have some sort of traumatic brain injury. You're have some chemical imbalance and you start to get the feeling that you're dead it's not an overwhelming thing at first usually you'll wake up one morning you'll start brushing your teeth you'll look in the mirror and you'll think i don't look alive something something's not right i can see it in my eyes people who suffer from this will say my heart's not pumping anymore i'm i i do not feel my pulse my blood my blood is missing from my body my stomach has rotted away. It's putrefied. All my guts are slowly rotting. And their brain is reinforcing this. Their brain is basically giving them signals that they are dead. Now, they're not. It's a delusion. Because obviously, when they go to medical personnel, they'll say, Oh, no, listen, that's your heart beating. And they'll have an excuse for that. Or your organs haven't, haven't actually liquefied, dude. And they'll be like, oh, brains, brains. Actually, sometimes they'll become mute. Because what's the point of speaking when you're dead? They'll stop eating. They had one woman starved to death. I, she was actually the first reported case of it. It's called Cotard Delusion. <laughs> it's called Cotard Delusion because it's named after the guy who discovered it. It was named after Jules Cotard. And this was in the 18, in 1880. They've had cases of it. It's very, very rare. But they don't know how rare. They don't know much about it because it's rare. And really, the only thing that doctors have to go off of is case studies. And they can go, well, you know, it could be related to this, could be related to that. But until someone pops up with a Kotar delusion, they really can't st study it. And these people aren't necessarily the most cooperative because they're dead. So they recently had this one girl who's had it. And she was 17 years old. And there's an interesting article because she has gotten better. You know, you can you can fix it. It is treatable. And so this young girl was saying that one day she was sitting there in class and she just got the overwhelming feeling just like that she's dead. And she didn't know what to make of it. She's like, wait, why? she just felt that she had passed away. And she said as she was walking home from school, she thought, you know what? I'm going to go visit a graveyard because that's where my family is. Those are my friends. But she goes, there was no graveyard on the way home. So she just went home and to sleep it off. And it was gone. And then a period of time later, a couple weeks, a month or two later, it came back. She's like, I'm dead. Like, it terrified her, but she's like, I'm dead. I'm dead in this body. And it didn't go away this time. It lasted. It lasted for years and years. And she just dealt with it. She said, I'm just going to eat whatever I want because I'm dead and I can't put on any weight. So she started just eating whatever she wanted. She watched a lot of zombie movies and stuff like that. She said it felt comforting seeing other dead people because to her, everyone else was alive and she was like the outsider. And what happened was she eventually confided in a friend and she was really nervous about it. And this is why it's always important to talk to people about any sort of issues you're having. A lot of people are like, ah, I don't want to burden you. And they're really like struggling with some heavy stuff. And if you ever do tell someone and you burden them with it, they're just going to say, hey, I think you need to see a professional. And that may be the push you need to go see a professional. But anyway, so that's what happened. She finally told her friend and her friend said, well, I think you need to talk to your father about this. And then she told the father and the father goes, we need to take you to uh, get you some psychiatric help. And at this point, it had been like two years. She goes to the psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist goes, oh, you're suffering from Cotard's del Cotard delusion. And she was like, I, it had a name? I wasn't the only person. So once she knew what it was called, she started looking up online. She saw other people had suffered with this. She saw that it was rare, and she started treatment. And she said she attributed her success to the... Or basically friends, her family, and her boyfriend, and watching Disney movies, because watching Disney movies, like, made her happy. And she said, at one point, I turned to my boyfriend and said, how can I be dead if I'm this happy? And that was kind of that push out of it. And now she talks to other people about it and, you know, tries to let people know that this is a real thing. So there is the way to get out of it. Now, that is 
the most like in-depth story we could find on it. A lot of stuff is just little references in medical journals. There was a dude, this is not a good travel guide. Don't ever put this in your tourism book, South Africa. There was a dude in Ireland who got a traumatic brain injury. And his mom takes him to South Africa to live. And when he gets there, he's like, I'm dead and I'm in hell. I died of AIDS. And I'm just a corpse walking around. Leave that out of your tourism guide. Because if somebody is comparing your country to hell, probably not going to get a lot of people visiting it. If like someone who visits there is like, I must have died on the airplane over. I must have gotten AIDS on that plane over. Now I'm in hell. That's not good. So yeah, Kotar delusion. It's... The brain can control the body to the point where you're feeling physical sensations or, and you're feeling your guts liquefy. It's tell, Your brain is telling you your guts aren't there anymore. And then you go, well, then I guess I don't need to eat. So fascinating little delusion. Creepy. You know, there's also the other theory. I don't believe this, but I'm going to throw this out here. What if people who suffer from Kotar delusion have been Mandela affected into a reality where they're still alive. So let's say that they died in their reality. Let's say the guy did get AIDS on the plane over to South Africa and then died immediately because I guess that's how AIDS works in his head. And when he gets off on the plane, so in our reality where we're treating him medically, he's still alive, but in the reality he came from, he died. Or the woman who was the first case, Mademoiselle X, who starved to death, she said, I'm dead, so I don't have to eat. What if in her original reality, she did die, but she switched to our reality where she's alive. And now that she's died in our reality, she switches into yet another reality where she is still alive. I'm going to say this too, going on to that little rant. The whole thing about quantum immortality and quantum suicide, and we'll do a separate episode on that. I do have to say that is a thought experiment. Please don't put a gun to your head, pull the trigger, and think you're going to live. Quantum suicide is the belief that if you commit suicide, you can't exist in a reality where you have no consciousness. So if you die, you actually switch to a reality where you're still alive. Meaning, everybody lives forever. You can't comprehend a world that you can't, you have no senses for, therefore you don't die. So you pull the trigger and in the original reality, you die from the gunshot, but in the reality, you continue to experience the gun jams or someone walks in the room or something like that. And John McAfee who came up with the McAfee antivirus, which is garbage antivirus. He's a big proponent of that. He actually put a gun to his head and pulled the trigger in front of a reporter, and he said, in another reality, I died. But here's my question. Here's my pushback on quantum immortality, quantum suicide. If you, let's say you get in a car accident, you're paralyzed from the neck down. So you didn't die, paralyzed from the neck down. And then you, your breathing tube breaks and you suffocate. When you switch to the new reality, are you still... Paralyzed from the neck down, but your breathing tube didn't break. So does that mean you're paralyzed from the neck down forever? Because you're still conscious, you can still perceive things. Basically, that would mean that if you ever were incarcerated for life, or ever horribly paralyzed or mutilated or anything like that, you will just keep switching from reality to reality forever, and always be locked in prison for life. So, or paralyzed from the neck down. And I just think that's a ridiculous idea. But I did want to throw that out with the Kotar delusion thing. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.